Kevin, thank you again for agreeing to do this. Yeah, I'm thank you so much. Super excited to take a look at your brain. Me too. I think I'm a little more excited. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. Um, well, listen, what would you say your goals are for today? What do you want to accomplish by the end of this? Uh, I'm really interested to just get some more awareness and clarity about what's happening inside my head. Mm -hmm. um, like I said to you earlier, I'm like a 31-year-old healthy guy. And I just noticed that there are some things that like maybe uh, aren't normal or like aren't stereotypically how I should be feeling or acting. And mm -hmm. I just love to learn more. This is my first time doing anything like this. And so I'm just yeah. really excited. Yeah, great. Well, yeah. I'm glad you're here. Me too. Um, yeah. You mentioned um, feelings of being an imposter oh, sometimes. Yeah. Could you say more about that? Yeah. Um, well, I think like most people deal with this to a certain extent, you know, mm -hmm. you don't believe in yourself or you don't feel that you have the skills and attributes that like the person who does the thing you want to do mm -hmm. would have, or at least that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. And so um, often, even though I know that I'm pretty effective in my life and my job and my relationships, uh, I feel that I'm like playing a character. I often feel like I am uh, not welcome. Mm in my own space or like not welcome in my own life mm. or like I'm an outsider into my in my own life. Uh, right. I don't know if that's specifically like the imposter thing, but yeah, I feel well, that way often. It, yeah, it's interesting, you know, it imposter syndrome is yeah. I mean it's exactly what you're referring to. You yeah. know, this this concept of never feeling like you're measuring up, even if yeah. you're achieving a whole lot. Yeah. Feeling like someone's gonna find you out and expose you as not yeah. actually being genuine or yeah. knowledgeable, whatever the case may be. But it's interesting because it tends to affect people who are high achieving, uh, especially yeah. people who come from households where achievement is the focus, yeah. you know, or the primary focus growing up. And I'm very blessed. I have uh, some people who like really believe in me and I have a very close uh, group of friends and a support system Yeah, and they share that message with me all the time. It's like, right. no dude, you've you've got this, like, you're good. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I struggle believing them even still. So yeah. it's, uh, Are you able to celebrate achievement? No. <laughs> <laughs> what does that feel like? Uh, I feel guilty. I have this intense sense of guilt for like everything. Mm. And I don't know where it comes from. Uh, probably my earliest years, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. But uh, okay. I struggle. It's actually very funny. I'm, I'm incredibly lucky in my life. Like everything I have is Again, this is me doing an imposter thing, but it's not because of me, it's because of some weird like right. luck. Yeah. Um, but I get to do a bunch of really cool things professionally, mm -hmm. and I uh, was just on this two week long trip working with my closest friends in the fitness capacity. It was incredible. I was in Mexico, mm -hmm. and I didn't relax for a second. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how, I don't know how to not be on. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to not be overwhelmed. I slept probably five minutes last night because I was like so excited about this or maybe yeah. anxious about this, you know? Right, yeah. It's a, and that's just like a common theme in my life. Has there been a time uh, where you haven't felt anxious? I don't think so. When you slow down, uh, when you're not busy with something, <laughs> yeah. what, what's that experience like for you? Uh, my self-talk's horrible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. Um, a lot of it is reflecting on how I haven't accomplished the things I hoped I would ultimately accomplish. Right. Or like this weird feeling of being behind. So me being alone, not actively doing something is like just the worst. So driving in the car might be an example of that. That's where I get, I have panic attacks in the car. Mm. Yeah. So that's why I'm so excited to like learn about, <laughs> yeah, learn about. Absolutely. And the, my biggest fear was that I'd come in and I'd tell you all these things and be like, this is my experience. Uh, and then you'd be like, dude, your brain is fine. <laughs> like, oh, then what do I do now? You know? Well, I think we're going to, I think there's a lot of relevant findings cool. uh, on your scans. That's and, exactly. um, and that that should generate a lot of hope because yeah. there are things that we can actually do about it. Yeah. yeah. And I'm fully committed to yeah. changing this. You've had some head injuries in the past, is that right? Yeah. Could you tell me about some of that? Um, I've had a couple larger scale head injuries. Mm -hmm. uh, in my 20s, flipping a four-wheeler and like hitting my head on the ground really hard mm -hmm. or like uh, having things dropped on my head. I've been in a gym for most of my adult life and you know, things happen. You're moving a squat rack and right. somebody drops their corner and it hits you in the head and you get knocked out. Mm -hmm. uh, little things like that have happened. Well, that sound fairly big actually. Boxing. <laughs> See, and that's, and from my perspective, it's like yeah. that's a small, uh -huh. no big deal. 
this is going to be a big focus of your treatment. Yeah, I hope. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of times people just shrug that off yeah. and think that if they're not unconscious for a long time, then yeah. things are all right. But these hits to the head are very important. <laughs> So now, let's talk about scans. I'm ready. All right. Um, so our task is pretty simple. We're looking for parts of the brain that are either underperfused, overperfused, mm -hmm. or uh, at a normal level of perfusion. Okay. So the scans over on the right here are looking at the surface of the brain, at the cortex of the brain. Yeah. What we care about is the three-dimensional shape. Okay. Um, all right. So here are your scans. Okay. There are a few areas uh, that you can probably spot where there are some reductions in yeah. the blood flow, you yeah. know, and some increased contour along the back here, which we would refer to as some scalloping would be the term for that. Okay. Um, the main areas, though, of reduction were up here in your prefrontal cortex, and then also here in your temporal lobes. And if you have reduced blood flow to the prefrontal cortex, that can look a lot like ADHD-like symptoms. So having a hard time maintaining your focus, feeling like your mind is wandering, feeling like it's hard to shift your attention when you need to shift it. Yeah. So there are a lot of reasons that people can have reduced blood flow to the front of the brain. Um, ADHD is one of them, but so is traumatic brain injury. Mm. Um, and you've certainly had your share of events, but that's not the only part of the brain that's affected. The temporal lobes also are here and here okay. on the brain. And the temporal lobes hide away in a cavity in the skull here and here called the medial cranial fossa. Okay. And that cavity has a sharp bony ridge along the front called the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. The terms don't really matter. What matters is as your brain is kind of rattling in your skull mm -hmm. following a head injury, those temporal lobes can bump up against that sharp bony ridge yeah. and lead to some reductions in blood flow. Yeah. Um, and so your temporal lobes are pretty reduced. Yeah. Right? They're like gone. <laughs> uh, well, they're still there. Yeah. Remember, right, right. we're not Just, looking at actual right, brain. Right. We're looking at blood flow. <laughs> so you have temporal lobes. Yeah. Um, what we need to do they're is sleepy. they're sleepy. Yeah. Exactly. And we need to perk them up a little bit. Okay. Right? So why? Um, you could think of the temporal lobes as, as your temper lobes in some ways. Um, they are very important in a number of different functions, including mood stability. And so when you have reduced blood flow to the temporal lobes, that can show up like irritability, anxiety, dark thoughts, depression. I didn't say it, but I'm America's most irritable person. Um, let's take a look at the deeper scans now. I'm excited now. about this one. You are, I know, <laughs> um, and I am too. So remember our reference over there. Yeah. Here are your scans. Okay. Now, there's two things that stand out to me most. The first is an area of relative underactivity, and the second is an area of hyperactivity. Okay. Okay. Your cerebellum, remember that structure we were talking about in the back of the brain responsible right. for coordination? Your cerebellum is down a little bit. Okay. Um, so typically we expect to see a whole lot more red and white. Um, and now, did your eyes lock into this? Yep. Like a little acorn in the middle. Yeah. So that is your thalamus. Okay. Um, the thalamus is a critical structure in the brain, but one of its functions is to serve as the emotional gatekeeper in your brain, if you will. Yeah. People with a hot thalamus tend to be people who are pretty sensitive, empathic, deeply feeling. Uh -huh. um, and also, when that thalamus really ramps up in activity, as yours has, more predisposed to depression. Yeah. Tracking this back to what you've told me, you know, yeah. you've you've probably been a sensitive, empathic person for much of your life, mm -hmm. you know, with a predisposition towards depression. You've been through some difficult life experiences, mm -hmm. traumas, yeah. um, and that's probably heated this up even further over time. Then you sustain traumatic brain injuries, which reduce blood flow to your temporal lobes and your prefrontal cortex, and suddenly it's much harder to regulate the depression that you might be experiencing, and also hard to focus, shift, and stop certain thoughts that might pop into your head. 
right? because your prefrontal cortex is also like your brake pedal. Yeah. Uh, and you might have a hard time stepping on the brakes and disengaging from those sort of negative thought loops. Yeah. Um, you read my diary? <laughs> no, just that's your me. brain. That's me. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's like literally me. Yeah. That's wild. That's pretty wild how these can often match up very closely with people's lived experience. That's my whole life. That's so unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. So the other thing Holy I like shit. about the scans, in addition to being super validating, yeah. Right? Well, yeah. If there's like a level of relief where, like I told you, my biggest fear was that was it was to like find not, nothing. Yeah. yeah. But that's like exactly me. Yeah. Instead of finding nothing, we found exactly what you're experiencing, uh, and a graphical representation of that. Um, Part of me, my first knee-jerk thought is like, oh, it's not that bad. You're fine. Like you're good. <laughs> but that is exactly my life. Right? Right? Yeah. So in addition to being super validating, the thing I like about these scans are um, it further supports what our action plan needs to be, right? Yeah. One way of saying that would be, we really need to calm down your thalamus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, not to a point where you're not empathic, right. but to a point where you're experiencing less depression, right? Yeah. And we also need to boost blood flow to your temporal lobes and to your prefrontal cortex. And that's our task. Um, do you want to talk about how we're going to do that? I would love to. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> Let's do it. This is the one. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that a, vi it's a vitamin pack? Yeah. Um, so the supplement that comes to mind um, for you is our Brain and Body Power Max. Um, so this has a whole lot in it, a whole lot of good stuff. Um, and within that, it includes all the omega-3s you need for the day. Mm. It includes a brain-healthy multivitamin. And it also includes three capsules of what we call our brain and memory power boost formulation. And that includes ingredients that you can see listed here. Yeah. Things that both, uh, the theme here is things that both boost blood flow to the brain and also reduce inflammation in the brain. Okay. That's kind of the overarching goal of, yeah. uh, of these. And also helping you know, promote um, cell membrane health and integrity. Sure. Um, so one, supplement option for yeah. boosting serotonin in the brain uh, would be a product called Happy Saffron Plus. Okay. So it's only got three ingredients in it. A high potency saffron extract. Uh, this is what Here it looks is. like. Okay. Uh, a high potency saffron extract, um, which naturally boosts serotonin in the brain. Yeah. Curcumins, which okay. are uh, like a turmeric derivative and yeah. are really potent anti-inflammatory. Yeah. Uh, and then some zinc. Okay. Um, and so this might be uh, a natural option yeah. for helping boost serotonin and calming down some of that depression and that anxiety. Yeah, thank you so much for this. It's really uh, incredible. I appreciate your time and, and also the information so valuable to me. I'm excited to like do a cool thing. Now. I'm so excited to be on this journey with you. Yeah. You know, we're we're gonna we're gonna cover a lot of ground, um, and I'm excited to see what the coming months are gonna have in store for you. And uh, yeah, just really optimistic that you're going to be getting to a, a better level of functioning. I really am. Yeah, thank you so much. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Ben.